Um, welcome to the series of lectures um, on Lectures TV. Today we are looking at Introduction to Advanced uh, Macroeconomics. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at the principles of macroeconomics and how that affects the economy of Ghana. Um, in this video, we're going to look at the uh, different models of growth. Uh, we're going to look at all the different models of growth. And we're we going to examine and interrogate the models of growth against uh, the, the economic development in the country. Yes, uh, the finance minister, Ken Ovoriata, has finally presented the 2022 budget uh, to parliament. And then um, we have seen a lot of comments coming through. Some sections of the Ghanaian population have shaded the head of the economic management team, Dr. Mahamadou Balmia, for poor performance of the economy and other issues have come. Notably, uh, members of the opposition party, notably Adongo and others, have critically commented uh, on these developments. And many of these um, uh, policy think tanks have criticized the government on different aspects of the budget, including debt, including the unemployment rate, including the wage rate, including the uh, so-called controversial e-levy, and how government intends to raise revenue to be able to address some of these uh, challenges. Uh, but there are st these are very good ideas, but there are still challenges with it. Uh, in the view to the, uh, there are still some challenges associated with these other aspects because uh, some sections of the public believe that these are going to uh, really uh, affect the economy, it's going to be detrimental to the benefits of the economy, to the ordinary people. For example, uh, the e-levy is intended to uh, raise revenue for development of the country through entrepreneurship and income diversification policies. But there are a lot of questions. Uh, is that going to exclude a lot of people uh, in the economy? Could the e-levy that is going to tax mobile money uh, going to be a disincentive for, uh, what's it called, businesses, for struggling businesses? Could it be uh, a financial inclusion problem? Could it create financial inclusion problem and so on? So in this context, we're going to look at macroeconomics and examine how these current events uh, would influence uh, macroeconomics in this analysis. Now, um, in this particular instance, we're going to look at the macroeconomics. Uh, macroeconomics is studied at the advanced level, uh, postgraduate level in most universities across the world. And then uh, it's a very critical thing. And economists in Ghana, even they people need to understand these things so that they are not bamboozled uh, by economics. It's important to understand how economists reason. And if you understand how the economies reason, you'll be able to adjust yourself as businessmen in the economies. And this is one of the reasons why you should look at uh, inter international macroeconomics or local macroeconomics, or you should study advanced macroeconomics. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the fascinating thing about macroeconomics. One of the most fascinating things about macroeconomics is the capacity of this area to address issues related to inflation, unemployment, and real growth in the country it's a very very important concept and one of the most most wonderful thing about uh, macroeconomics is this capacity to identify you know some of these challenges and this capacity to explain growth in different parts of the world and in our part of the country so in this video as part of the analysis of the macroeconomic principles needed to evolve our country we're going to be looking at different models um, different models, there are several models affecting economic growth uh, in Ghana and all parts of the world. Some of these models include the solo growth model, um, the Lewis model, the Schumpeterian model, as well as the Harrod-Dorman model. So these are very complex models related to uh, economic theory, abstraction and the rest. So in this video, I will not focus on Schumpeterian model, Lewis's model and all the complex models. I'll look at it uh, when I'm looking at the uh, postgraduate aspect of the uh, macroeconomic theory. But for beginners, uh, uh, I will concentrate on the growth model and the growth theory, um, growth model and the growth theory. Uh, these are uh, very influential things uh, related to the development of the economy. So um, I am going to explain um, development or growth in terms of models. A model is basically an expression of reality, is an expression of a theory. And a theory basically um, uh, explains the relationships, the causal relationship between economic variables, the causal relationship between um, unemployment and inflation, causal relations between uh, unemployment and inflation and many aspects of the economy. So for example, um, with macroeconomic analysis, we really can explain um, the cost of graduate unemployment in the country. We can explain the rising inflation rates 
in the country and all other issues that are relevant to you and how these issues affect the business cycle so for example if you want to invest in ghana um, if you want to invest in the ghanaian economy looking at the current inflation rate of 11 percent how does that influence the capacity of a business to infl uh, to invest in the country uh, we're going to look at uh, current trends and fluctuations in the within the business cycle and see how inflation and other macroeconomic variables actually influence um, the economy and livelihoods of people. Now, macroeconomics is very important because over the past 300 years, macroeconomics has actually contributed to the development of the world. We have seen uh, a marked increase in consumption of public goods. We have seen a marked increase in consumption of public goods. There's better education, there's better uh, consumption. And there's better healthcare because of all the material well-being that the study of macroeconomics has brought. And this is a very critical thing. And it's important to look at uh, macroeconomics in terms of its contribution to uh, social welfare and prosperity. And this is why it's relevant uh, to look at uh, macroeconomics. And one of the things that actually crack it for me in macroeconomic analysis is the capacity to use models to explain growth, unemployment and inflation. Uh, in the country, um, some of the so some of the key concepts are related to the models. We we'll look at the solo growth model. So the solo growth model will look at the uh, reproduction function of uh, the solo growth model, and also we we'll look at the decomposition function of the solo growth model. So we'll see how the decomposition model uh, influences growth in an economy and how uh, businesses are affected by these kinds of models. So for example, some of my postgraduate students at the MSc level have interrogated uh, these principles vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the expansion of the economy. So for example, they have used um, this uh, solo growth model to explain how uh, firms grow from year to year and why certain countries shrink. So you can use macroeconomics to assess the performance of different countries around the world. And this is why it's very relevant. Uh, to people in businesses you need to be able to answer certain questions related to business now with the um, invention of new technology how is that impacting the business cycle is uh, unemployment rate going to affect us more what is what are some of these kinds of things we will do so um, in this uh, video we'll be looking at some of these things and in looking at models uh, we'll be looking at um, the ASAD model uh, that gives us an ability to diagnose the symptoms of the economy uh, with these models, we are able to diagnose the symptoms of the economy um, and not just diagnose the symptoms of the economy, but we must offer prescriptions to address some of these challenges. So, for example, if we diagnose the economy and we find that there's high unemployment in Ghana, the inflation rate is currently very high and growth rate is very low or real growth output is very low what how do we solve these problems how do we fix the economy how do we fix graduate unemployment uh, in the country all these kinds of things can be done using proper models and the proper models which are uh, interpretations of reality will give us a proper handle on how to solve some of these questions uh, how, how to solve how to solve some of these uh, nagging economic problems uh, in the country and that is why it is very critical to our analysis in today's uh, video. So we're going to look at the growth and the growth theory. Now looking at the growth and the growth theory, the solo model of economic growth gives us a better understanding of how economies grow. So in the solo model, we're going to interrogate uh, the things that lead to economic growth of different countries and why certain countries shrink, why other countries are doing better than others in terms of addressing unemployment, in terms of addressing real growth, in terms of addressing inflation, why other countries within the same block are doing other, better than others. So for example, um, why is China doing better than most countries in the world? <laughs> Um, the, the, the great thing, as I was saying, the great thing about um, advanced macroeconomics is that it gives us the ability to examine the economy in perspective. Uh, we are able to look at the economy as a machine and how the economy operates as a machine and how various sectors of the economy are affected by different variables, including uh, inflation, real growth and unemployment. Um, it helps us to understand uh, some of these fundamental things. And then not just to be able to understand, it also helps us to 
uh, explain economics uh, to the average person in very simple terms so for example with the tools of macroeconomics we can explain to uh, people in different areas of the economy you can talk to your grandmother about the nature of the economy you can talk to your brother you can talk to a man in a bar you can talk to a man on the field about the nature of the economy why inflation is high and why inflation is not falling and how that influences the average person so for example in ghana we are interested in addressing the problem of graduate unemployment why we have so many graduates in the system, why they go through uh, the university system, go to Gimpa, for example, University of Ghana, for example, after a four-year program, uh, they come out, they graduate, and they don't have jobs. So all these things are very interesting things that we can use. Uh, that are very these are all very interesting things and all these things can be explained in the context of advanced macroeconomics. Now, some of you have um, some of you have read a few things about uh, macroeconomics, you've looked at uh, inflation, unemployment and growth rate, but at the advanced level uh, of macroeconomics, we're going to look at the influence of all these growth models in the economy. We're going to look at how uh, these models are affected by different variables. So we're going to uh, look at unemployment, inflation and real growth within uh, you mean in the through the lens of models and through the lens of models and through the lens of models we use the uh, the theories to interpret the causal relationship between some of these agents and in this video we're looking at top models we're looking at the Schumpeterian model uh, we'll be looking at the Lewis's model we'll be looking at the Harold Dormont model of economic growth but most importantly we're focusing on Solo's growth uh, because uh, I'll focus on the Schumpeterian model and other aspects of economic growth um, when we look at advanced aspects of uh, macroeconomics when I treat uh, the graduate section uh, and PhD section of this uh, series of lectures. Now, in this particular instance, we're looking at how models can be used uh, to interpret reality, how models can be used to interpret reality. So models are the lenses through which we view the world and the lenses through which we view unemployment in Ghana, the lenses through which we review uh, if we will view inflation, the lenses through which we view unemployment and all these kinds of problems in the economy. So it's very important to study uh, uh, macroeconomics. <laughs> um, advanced macroeconomics gives us the tools to interrogate unemployment in Ghana and why wages are falling and why um, the economy, there's so much economic hardship in the system. So we can use the um, the, the principles and models of macroeconomic uh, theory to interrogate some of these new developments in the country. If you listen to the news and all around the world, there's much talk about growth rates and why unemployment rate is increasing in Ghana and other parts of the world. So uh, macroeconomics is critical because it gives us the tools to be able to address some of these issues. And I will address the, 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 the problems of Ghanaian economy, I mean how to fix the economy, how to fix unemployment, and how to solve these major problems in the economy through the lens of economic models, through the lens of economic models. In this video, I have introduced you to a series of uh, models and series of models and how these models can be used uh, to interpret economic realities and analysis of, of situations uh, in real life. So we'll use these models to interpret inflation, unemployment and real growth uh, within the economy. And these things are critical for everybody because uh, uh, you don't need to be bamboozled by economists. It's important for you uh, to understand these things and for most business people it is important to see how uh, these three fundamental aspects in inflation for example influences the financial markets and how they influence your ability to invest in these markets and how they affect the business cycle because understanding this is critical to profit making and you can see through macroeconomics international macro to uh, what's it called advanced macroeconomics uh, we'll be able to see how some of these uh, macroeconomic variables, inflation, unemployment, and real growth affects the business cycle. We look at the flow, we look at the trends and the uh, fluctuations and how that inf influences uh, the business cycle. And business people need to know these kinds of things in order to have a better perspective of the economy because they need to survive in the economy. Because businesses operate within an economy, uh, they need to understand how the economy operates and how to navigate some of these challenges within the economy. And that is why uh, it's very fascinating and interesting to look at um, macroeconomics at the advanced level. Now, at the advanced level, I would use models to explain uh, some of the challenges that we have. I'll use models to explain the problems we've had in Ghana, unemployment, 
graduate unemployment, high inflation rates currently at 11%, and why certain countries within the sub region are doing better than Ghana in spite of all our revenue and all these kinds of things. So it is critical to examine these kinds of things in the context of macroeconomics. Now, we examine the We'll use the solo growth model to examine Ghana's economic growth. And as I mentioned, there are several models of looking at economic growth. Uh, there's the Lewis model, there's the Schumpeterian model, the Harodomo model. A lot of models uh, can be used to examine the nature of these things. Some of these models are exogenous, others are endogenous. And then depending on the situation, we can analyze economic growth of Ghana using some of these models. So for today's lecture in this video, I am going to focus on the uh, solo growth model because the solo growth model has been around for quite some time we've used it for the past 300 years and it's interested in measuring economic growth in the long run it's interested in measuring economic growth in the long run so when we examine economic theory at the doctorate level or we explain uh, economic phenomenon or growth using the solo growth model and what it does is it basically gives us reasons why other countries do better than others and why certain countries do not do better and how we can fix some of these problems and why other countries are doing better than other countries so for example we need to see why certain countries are growing are expanding you know and other countries are shrinking uh, within the same context we need to see how that affects uh, wages and other aspects of livelihoods and how that influences the ordinary human being uh, in the country so we use the growth model to be able to extract uh, this type of function and how some of these things influence various aspects of the market so um the growth the solo growth model is it's a it's, it's a model uh, in the long run that is used to explain economic growth in the long run and how some of these uh, factors influence uh, economic growth uh, so for example you know one of the most fascinating things about economics is how it's able to improve our well-being okay and for me, as a matter, one of the greatest he my one of the greatest heroes of uh, macroeconomics uh, in recent years has been um, Joan Robinson. Robinson, as an economist, as a female economist, has contributed a lot uh, to the understanding of the theory of advanced macroeconomics at the master's level and at the doctorate level. In fact, I learned a lot about uh, Joan Robinson, a female economist, uh, in my doctorate studies. And uh, she's one of the most fascinating economists, and, and, and I recommend, and, and in fact, she, if you read her works, uh, you really appreciate uh, the, the contribution that she's made into this area. So, uh, John Robinson is a guru of price setting. Um, she is the mother of monopolistic competition, and then she explains economic growth in the context of some of these things. And if you read some of her publications, you would see that. I'm surprised she did not win the Nobel Prize. And in fact, she didn't win the Nobel Prize because of her critical nature of the capitalist of the critical because of a critical nature of the capital theory and uh, she was very critical of the capital theory and why poorer countries are poorer and why some of these uh, what's it called advanced countries america and others are taking advantage of the situation and so on so um she was she really contributed a lot to some of these things but she didn't get the nobel prize because she was very cap she was very critical of the capital theory and this was why she didn't get it but for me she stands out as one of the most remarkable uh, female economists of all time because of the way she explained uh, uh, advanced macroeconomics and i continue to read her works and this is why i encourage all of you to google uh, joan robinson and read more about her mm -hmm. And read more about some of these things so uh basically that is what we look we're going to look at so in the solo model uh, we're looking at the solo growth model uh we are going to interrogate another important concept within the models asad model the asad model gives us the tools to interrogate uh the behavior of different variables within the economy the behavior of different variables within the economy now it's a very simple way of uh bringing of our uh, of uh, identifying and diagnosing some of the symptoms some of the problems within the economy it gives us it's a tool for diagnosing the symptoms uh, within the economy but with this just like a doctor diagnosis uh, what they call the problems in a patient now with aggregate demand aggregate supply model we are able to diagnose uh, the nature of the economy and when we diagnose the nature of the economy uh, we just don't leave it there we as economists are charged with the responsibility of coming up with the right prescriptions um, to dealing with uh, to dealing with those kinds of problems and that is the hardest part so 
uh, that is the hardest part. So you really can use some of these uh, economic models, these are uh, economic abstractions that are used to explain reality, uh, to be able to explain how some of these things. So we use these models to predict and, and forecast the behavior of some of these things in real life. Of course, you cannot predict and forecast the behavior of everything. I mean, nobody predicted the coming of Donald Trump in America. Nobody predicted the coming of uh, the ex-president of Ghana, uh, John Mahama, and some of these kinds of things. So, but the conditional expectations of the theory require that we, we explain some of these things when they happen uh, in economics. And it is your role as an economist to use these theories to explain the underlying causes of some of these things. So when we use these models, the solo growth model to interpret reality, unemployment and some of these issues, we're looking at how the causal relationship between these variables affects outcomes and output within the country. So these are some of the things we'll be looking at uh, in this video and then we have dealt with it critical. Now with the aggregate supply, aggregate uh, demand model, um, it, it's a very good model for looking at some of these challenges. It gives us ways and, and, and uh, important ways. It gives us uh, new ways of solving the economic problems that we have in Ghana, gadget, unemployment, and so on. So we can actually use the solo decomposition model to extract um, a new uh, pathway for developing the country. We can actually use this model to fix the economy. Uh, we can actually use this model to explain the new pathway for constructing new aggregate demand, aggregate supply cap that would inure to the benefits of the ordinary people of this country. So within the context of macroeconomic theory, we can examine some of these things uh, within the context of aggregate demand, aggregate supply models. Now, the aggregate supply, aggregate supply, aggregate supply, aggregate demand model uh, is a very simplistic tool for looking at some of these things. And the interesting thing about uh, macroeconomics is that it is self-referential. Uh, Self-referential in the sense that it gives us the means to be able to interrogate all these different uh, disjointed aspects of the economy and how we can pull all that together to make sense of some of these problems that we are facing. For example, in Ghana, why are deficits increasing? Is the so-called Ajapa thing, Ajapa thing really critical for the economy? And why the tax net is widening to capture the informal sector? What are the issues related to financial inclusion? Is the current new levy, that is the, uh, what's it called, the Momo levy at 1.7% really going to affect our economy in a positive way? Or in a negative way of course the finance minister uh, ken Oforiata, has spoken to some of these issues and the the, the policy rationalization for these increments is to raise uh, revenue to be able to uh, deal with some of these problems but the one of the major things that i would like to bring into uh, this discussion as you see the yeah the the issue of financial consolidation doesn't only have to look at the issues of uh, raising revenues uh, of course we've raised revenues in the past but where has all this money gone into so the main issue is about spending spending when it comes to in uh, expenditure can the government do something about the expenditure can we cut back on some of these uh, oversized spendings we're doing can we cut back on some of these opulence and the luxury things that we we do here in Ghana. So financial consolidation doesn't only have to be uh, about upping uh, revenue, it also has to do with financial discipline. It also has to do with cutting back on excessive spending on things that are not uh, so uh, critical for the economy. Of course, some things are not a real priority for the economy. Of course, some things are important. So, so um, the government is in a very tough place because uh, even though government, even though we, the Ghanaian people have been taxed over a period of time, they've been taxed COVID recovery taxes, energy taxes, and other aspect taxes. For example, today corporate taxes stands at 27%. There's a communication tax and new taxes are being added into the system. With this new budget, we anticipate in that in 2022, uh, more taxes would come to burden the ordinary citizen. But salaries are projected to increase for only 4%. So if you peg that against an inflation rate of, say, 11%, you find that uh, Ghanaians are really going to be in a very difficult situation. So when we use the, uh, the solo growth model, we are able to see the outcome of some of these decisions on the ordinary human beings. And this is why I want you to understand these basic things. Of course, even if you don't need these things, if you don't have to be an economist, but it's important to understand how the economy works and how that is going to affect your investments in future. Okay, so if you're a business if you're a businessman, uh, for example, uh, with these new kinds of levies, how is that going to incentivize your investment in the private sector development? 
uh, there are some people of the there are some sections of the public that agree that that, that say that some of these taxes are regressive for example abdullah nakia who is a tax analyst for example had spoken about some of these things and why that is going to be regressive because it's going to discourage uh, financial inclusion it's going to uh, tax more poor people than richer people and some of these economy some of these concerns have been raised in uh, what's it called have been raised uh, in the what's it called so it have been raised at the uh, uh, different institutions and all these uh, policy think tanks have talked about these issues. So um, you see that in the macroeconomics is very critical. So understanding this is important to enhancing uh, understanding of the various things that affect our livelihoods. Because as I mentioned earlier, macroeconomics affects choices and it affects business choices. It affects the decision making. It affects our decision making. And uh, it influences us a lot. So understanding this is very critical for all of us uh, in this setting. Now, the major goal of uh, aggregate demand, aggregate supply theory, and why it's very important for macroeconomic analysis is that, you see, when we look at macroeconomic analysis in terms of all these challenges that I have mentioned vis-a-vis -vis the current uh, budget situation in this country, you can see that uh, the model, aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, gives us the tools to interrogate so many things, large simultaneous equations in one area, in just one sector. Okay, so by building an effective or by constructing an effective aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, we are speaking to the large number of simultaneous equations that are affecting the basic human being and macroeconomics gives us the tools to do that. So the solo growth model as one of the models for looking at the economy in the long run is very critical to helping us uh, do this effectively. <laughs>
Chinese economist to double how long it can take an average person's income or savings to increase and so so too the rule of 70 is very important in these kinds of analysis so uh, these are some of the things so China is doing so well because uh, some of these issues so uh, when we look at the growth rate uh, using the long run solo model we can see that China is doing very well compared to other countries and we can also see comparing ourselves to other developing countries uh, like Ghana and other places we can see why the Ghanaian economy is not expanding so fast what are the things inhibiting the Ghanaian economy's growth and why graduate unemployment is uh, going up we can interrogate some of these things using models and using theories and with the theories we can explain the causal relationships between some of these decisions and how it affects uh, the human being in this case so these are some of the things that macroeconomics brings and then um, yes these are some of the things uh, macroeconomics brings now speaking quickly about inflation so for example inflation is the general rise of price level in the economy the general rise of goods and the general level of uh, the general rise of the price level of goods and services in the economy okay the general level the general rise of price level of goods and services in the economy that is what inflation measures so for example when the prices of things go up when inflation goes up does it affect the purchasing power or not it does so for example with the current Ghana's inflation of 11% and an annual salary increase of about 4%, how does that uh, influence inflation? How does that influence our uh, purchasing power and our savings? Now, understanding these things are very critical for some of us who work in the bank because some of us who work in bank, we need to understand the relationship between inflation and interest rates and how these interest rates are affected by uh, different kinds of things are the financial variables affected by inflation so for example those who work in the bank would really appreciate that inflation affects financial markets it affects uh, the stock market valuations and all these kinds of things even for the average or work Ghanaian worker uh, who saves monthly uh, who saves money in the bank uh, either through senior contributions or other forms of economy uh, other forms of savings we need to appreciate some of these things because uh, they need to understand how inflation would actually decrease their next egg of savings and how that affects their savings so for example if the financial markets crash because of high inflation it means you have also crashed so for example if you've saved up money to live on uh, when you retire and the financial markets crash because of these uh, some of because of these markets economic variable it means you have also crashed uh, probably you would have to uh, rely on your children to send you mobile money <laughs> in retirement to be able to live on and so on and so forth so these are some of these things and why it affects so it's very important to look at uh, advanced macroeconomics when looking at growth and as economic students and uh, economists I want us to be able to analyze the current happenings in Ghana the current deficits the hula balu surrounding the budget and all these things within the context of economic models and i've mentioned some of these economic the schumpeterian model the solo growth model the harodoma model and all these models we need to be able to use these in models to interpret reality and to be able to use these theories to explain the causal relationship between some of these variables and livelihoods um so this is where we leave it until we continue in the next video thank you very much for watching once again i am gamel abdul nazar a uh, lecturer consultant Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration and in the next video I'll give you more detailed analysis of some of these uh, models. Thank you.